So in this lab, we're going to be doing chromatography. And we're going to be using chromatography to separate different food dyes. Um, we're going to have a total of five mixtures with various combinations of the food dyes. And we're going to use chromatography to figure out which dye is in which mixture. Now, in order to do this, we're going to start by doing chromatography with, with each individual dye. And we're going to be calculating what's known as an RF factor. And that's essentially how far up the paper does the dye travel compared to how far up does the solvent travel. Now we're gonna use two different solvent solutions here. We have a 2% sodium chloride solution and a 2% isopropyl alcohol solution, which we often abbreviate as IPA. Now the difference between those, sodium chloride being ionic, allows for a lot of ion dipole interactions between the dye and the solvent. So that's considered a pretty polar solvent. Whereas isopropyl alcohol, there is an OH group on, it's an alcohol, so there's an OH group making it polar, but there's also the hydrocarbon part of the alcohol and that makes it more nonpolar. And so, and then the other thing that we have is the paper itself. Now, the paper is hydrophilic, so it's fairly polar. Um, and so we have all of those components together, and all of those things are going to determine how far up the paper does the dye travel. Now, in order to first test the known dyes, what we're going to do is we're going to dip a toothpick into the dye, and we're going to what's called spot it on the paper. But there's a couple of things we have to consider here. So when we spot on the paper, um, we wanna first off make sure that we're not starting at the very bottom because this is gonna get submersed into the solvent and I don't want the dye to travel downward into the solvent in the flask. I want the solvent to travel up and take the dye with it. So I don't wanna spot it at the very bottom of the paper. I do wanna spot it a little bit higher than that. Um, the other thing that I wanna keep in mind is how big my spot is going to be. So the, the more spread out the spot, um, the more spread out the separation is gonna be, it's not gonna be as tight. And we really want a smaller spot that's concentrated enough so that I can still see the dye, but that it's moving in a more narrow way. So what I mean by that when we're spotting is if I just very quickly, you know, very quickly push it down, um, I get, you know, that tiny little dot there, as opposed to, this is what I would not want to do is, hold it like that, because now look at the difference in the size of those spots. So because this spot over here is bigger, everything's gonna be more spread out when it travels up the paper. And so when we test our mixtures, uh, and it's possible the mixtures, the two dyes might overlap with each other, we really want everything to be really tight. So we really wanna try to have the small spot and not the large one. but as you'll see in the procedure, we also want to make sure that the dye is concentrated enough that I can still see it as it moves up the page. So that's why it'll tell you to spot quickly, let it dry, and then spot again and do that multiple times. So that way the dot isn't getting bigger, but you are making it more concentrated. Now I have some papers and also if you notice, I'm holding it on its edges. I'm trying not to touch the surface of the paper because I don't want any of like the oil or dirt from my fingers to contaminate the chromatography paper. So that's why I, I'm kind of trying to hold it on its edge here. So I have a couple of papers already spotted. Um, and the two dyes that I'm gonna show you we have our, um, our blue number one and then our yellow number five. Now there will be, there's another blue and another yellow that's in the sample data. Um, but I wanted to show you these two. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them in the flask. Um, and we have one flask with the sodium chloride and one flask with the IPA. 
And we're going to see the difference of how the two solvents, how they travel when one of them is one solvent is more polar than the other. So what we want to do here is we have our, our solvent chambers here. So the solvent's already at the bottom. I have a watch glass on top of the Erlenmeyer. And so the idea for that is um, any vapors from the solvent, it allows the entire chamber to become saturated. That just helps speed up the process as the solvent travels up the paper. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this paper in, I'm going to fold it and then use the watch glass to also secure the paper so that the paper doesn't just fall into the chamber. Once I do that, it's really then just a question of being patient and seeing what happens you know, as the solvent travels. Um, you can see on the paper, I drew a line with pencil, not with pen. Um, that'll be where I'm gonna start. And then when I take it out of the chamber, I'm gonna also use a pencil and mark how far up did the solvent travel? And also how far up did each dye travel? Um, and that way I'm gonna use that to measure and calculate my RF values. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these papers in and then we're just gonna watch the solvent travel up the flask. So I'm gonna pull these out now. Um, if you were doing the lab in person, we would allow it to travel up a little bit more, but I wanna, we can get the idea here um, of why we would pick one solvent over another, um, even though it hasn't traveled all the way up the page or the paper, sorry. So again, what I have to do is quickly draw a line to where the solvent traveled, as well as where I find each of the spots. Okay. Now, what we should notice here is the difference in how far up the yellow spot travel. So with the 2% sodium chloride, we see that we get really good separation between the blue and the yellow. Whereas with the isopropyl alcohol, both the blue and the yellow pretty much traveled the same distance. So that would be a problem if we are trying to identify an unknown mixture because these are gonna have the same RF values. But here we get really good separation. We're gonna have different RF values. So what that tells me is that when I'm testing my mixtures, I wanna use the sodium chloride solvent um, system as opposed to the isopropyl alcohol because I want that better separation. That's the whole idea with chromatography is to separate different compounds based off of their polarity. So now that I've identified that the sodium chloride is the better solvent choice, now what I'm gonna do after I test the other four known dyes, I'm gonna test my mixtures. Now for the purposes of this video, I just have mixture one here. So mixture one, it could have two or three of the food dyes um, in this mixture. 
And so I've already spotted it. And then I'm going to put it in my sodium chloride solvent chamber. And then the same thing I'm going to do that I did earlier, I'm going to allow the solvent to travel up so that I can see what components are in this mixture. So what we have here now, uh, you can see that there's different components of, from different dyes in our mixture. And so we're going to do what we did before. We're going to take this out, draw a line, and then I guess I kind of circle where we see the different dyes. Um, and so looking at this, we can see that it looks like we have three different dye components, a blue, a yellow, and a red. So what we would do in the calculations is we would calculate the RF values for each of the three spots and then compare that to the known RF values that we got from testing our known dyes and identify what the different components of the mixtures are. And we're going to do that for all five of our mixtures.